This news update is brought to you by... Say hello to Chelsea. Chelsea is a champion surfer, so she's accustomed to moving super fast, which is why she relies on super fast broadband brought to her through Flow's 100% fiber to the home network. It keeps her family sharing and surfing and saving each month. Combined, she bundles her Flow mobile, home phone, and TV services so she can enjoy much more for much less, and so can you. Visit any Flow retail outlet, call 1-800-804-2994, or visit discoverflow.co to find out more. One of a kind connection. This is how we flow. This is the Barbados Today Evening News Update for Wednesday, April 27th. Thank you for joining us. I am Mary Claire Williams. Education Minister Ronald Jones is warning that the common entrance exam will not be held to ransom if teachers make good on their threats to stage industrial action. Jones told a news conference this afternoon that contingency plans are in place to facilitate the exams if teachers stay off the job next week. Following a meeting of its membership last Friday, the Barbados Union of Teachers called for a meeting with the minister to be held by today. They threatened industrial action if those talks were not held. But BOT President Pedro Shepard said they received a letter from Minister Jones yesterday indicating that he was not available for the talks. According to Shepard, Jones said he had always made himself available to discuss the teacher's concerns, but he noted today's deadline was not appropriate and no alternative date could be set at the time. The BUT is meeting this evening to outline the next course of action. Regional airline Liat has confirmed that one of its employees has been arrested by police in connection with a drugs-related matter here. The employee was taken into custody yesterday, shortly after arriving at the Grantley Adams International Airport on a flight from St. Lucia. Liat says it will cooperate fully with law enforcement officials on the matter. In other police news this evening, a Surinamese national has been remanded to prison until May 5th after appearing in court on eight drugs charges. She was arrested after arriving at the Grantley Adams International Airport on Sunday. A search of her luggage by customs personnel revealed two taped packages, each containing cannabis. She was referred to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, where a package of cocaine was retrieved from her body, and she later passed out 22 packages containing cocaine weighing one kilogram. Members of the drug squad charged a woman with possession of cannabis, possession with intent to supply cannabis, trafficking of the drug, importation of cannabis, possession of cocaine, possession with intent to supply cocaine, trafficking of cocaine, and importation of the drug. One academic is calling for organizational and national policies to address a number of work-related issues which lead to absenteeism. The call comes as private sector companies estimate losses of millions of dollars each year due to voluntary absenteeism. Senior lecturer at the University of the West Indies Cave Hill Campus, Dr. Dion Greenwich, referred to a study carried out between 2004 and 2007 among 25 companies. He said it was estimated that those businesses lost approximately $3 million over six months. Some of the main causes for workers staying away from the job voluntarily, he said, were work-related stress, workplace culture, management style, and a feeling of a lack of justice in the workplace. There needs to be a policy move towards looking at the psychosocial environment. We need to look at the psychosocial environment, the stressors of, of, of employees, what's happening in terms of, of communication structures in organizations, what's happening in, in terms of the culture and, and climate of the organization, management practices, leadership, leadership styles. Are we, are we leading for high performance? Are we leading for innovation? Are we motivating employees to be innovative? Are we stifling employees? Or do we have environments that stifle employees? Because why that is also stressful. That contributes to absence. So why should they go there today? Well, they, if I tell them to do it this way, they want to do it that way anyway. They want to take my voice the same way going on. Are, are we receptive? These are, these are things that need to be considered. Greenwich was addressing the Barbados Association of Office Professionals Administrative Professionals Day Seminar at the Lloyd Erskine Sandiford Center this morning. Canada-based CIBC First Caribbean International Bank is entering the local insurance industry through a partnership with Massey United Insurance Limited. The bank has officially launched its CIBC First Caribbean Insurance Agency business, announcing that it will be selling auto and home insurance. It will be underwritten and administered by Massey United. The products will only be available to CIBC customers. Managing Director of Retail, Business and International Banking, Mark Senthill, 
says in the first phase, products will be rolled out in at least eight markets in which the bank operates. We are cognizant our clients have choices. And this product added to our arsenal is similarly not exempt to our customers having a choice having a choice. Hence the need to provide a hassle-free process differentiated, differentiated by surface, price, and of course, supported and backed by quality. There's regional and international news after this short break. Your first friend, your first love, your first teacher. Show your appreciation for the first lady in your life. Send a photo of you and your mother to we love you mom at barbadostoday.bb to be featured in our special Mother's Day photo album and for a chance to win some exciting prizes. To mom with love. In news from the region, the European Union says it will continue to monitor the follow-up given to serious accusations of extrajudicial killings in St. Lucia. EU representatives met with Prime Minister Kenny Anthony on the matter recently. A statement issued after the talks said the diplomats reiterated the allegations will be a priority for the new Director of Public Prosecution when that individual is appointed. Meanwhile, the leader of St. Lucia's opposition United Workers' Party, Alan Chastney, is denying claims that he threatened to publish the CARICOM impacts report. As everybody knows, I have never said anything or released anything or threatened to release anything. But clearly the Prime Minister's reaction confirms or suggested it confirms that the information that Mr. Wayne has put in his newspaper is correct. And if one took the time to read what was published, which was the 31 recommendations that were made um, in the impacts report, and those 31 recommendations have absolutely nothing to do with the killings themselves or the suggested extrajudicial killings, but they have everything with moving forward. So how do we fix this situation so that whatever happened during the impacts time or during the extrajudicial killing period could not happen again? And none of those things have been implemented. And finally, a suicide bomber has struck in the western Turkish city of Bursa, injuring 13 people. The attack took place near the city's 14th century Grand Mosque. The governor of Bursa says the attacker was a suspected female suicide bomber. Turkey has been hit by a wave of suicide bombings recently, blamed by Islamist and Kurdish militants. No one has yet claimed responsibility for the latest attack. And that's the news this evening. Remember, you can get more on our website, www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're on Izumi Media in bus terminals and screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also tune in to Channel 99 on Flow TV or Mix 96.9 FM for more news. I am Marie Claire Williams. Good evening.